Hey everybody, Ron here from Ron's Muscle Car Garage. Just got over COVID. In fact, I'm not 100%. It's been 14 days, man. Woo! Sucks. Um, it really wasn't a bad deal, just to let you guys know if you guys haven't had COVID. It was really the flu. Um, one of the things that's different that I've noticed about it, though, is it kind of comes and goes. So one day I'll feel really good, and the next day all of a sudden it'll hit you again. And uh, like right now, I'm temperature-wise, I'm still a little bit fluctuating. Got a little bit of a cough when I exert myself a little bit. Uh, I was trying to break up some grass here this morning and <coughs> got into a coughing fit. So that's the deal with that. Uh, I was able to take some medication that uh, is taboo. Uh, but anyway, it worked. It knocked it out within the first four days, uh, as soon as I realized I had it. Uh, but like I say, it's been lingering on a little bit. So I'll get over it, no big deal. Um, what I want to talk to you about today though, and I'm going to go ahead and fire this baby up right here, is uh, what I do um, with my E85 cars. Um, this is a big mistake I think a lot of people make, and it's one that I have addressed long ago, and it's helped me. Um, I've been running E85 for over 12 years now in both my 69 Camaro as well as the 67 Camaro, and I'm a believer of not draining carburetors. Uh, both these cars run carburetors, uh, uh, dominators, and uh, I've had great success through the years, not only with ethanol, but also with gasoline or race fuel. Um, I believe that when a carburetor gets dried out, um, it can create issues. I've had issues in the past. When I've, I've been at this game since 1977, and uh, man, I've learned a lot. Uh, but this is what I do. I fire these cars up once every month, once every 30 days for just a heat cycle. So what I'm gonna show you here today is I'm just gonna fire it and let it run, uh, you know, get it up to temperature, and that's good enough. Because what I wanna do is I wanna cycle fuel through the fuel system. Now keep in mind too, now just for example, this, end, uh, this setup right here um, runs uh, Earl's Lines, which is the uh, steel braided, rubber lined lines, interior is rubber. Um, I've never ever ever had an issue with running eth ethanol. Nothing's ever broke down, nothing's ever, deter ever, uh, ever deteriorated. I've never had an issue with gaskets or anything. Now there is one time, because I run a Mallory 250 pump in this car, that I had a little drip right where the um, where, where the uh, adjustment is at the very bottom for your pressure, okay, for the regulator portion of the, of the uh, pump. And I took it apart. I didn't see anything wrong with it, but I bought a, a rebuild kit. And I was surprised. I didn't know this at the time. This was several years ago. This is probably like, I'm going to guess, eight or nine years ago. And I called Summit Racing, and uh, they asked me, do you want the alcohol or the uh, regular fuel uh, rebuild kit. So that one was startling. I was like, oh, well, I'm running E85. And then the guy said, oh, yeah, you're going to want it with the alcohol. And I said, tell me something about it. What's going on with that? And he said, well, it just has a little bit more um, capability to handle the alcohol versus what you'd have with gasoline. And that was the first time and the only time that I've had some sort of a question about running ethanol. Um, so and, and just to let you know, here's something that, that kind of negates all that as well. I have two of everything. I have two, uh, for instance, what we're talking about right now, Mallory 250 pumps. Rather, and I still have the rebuild kit that I bought. I just never rebuilt the other spare, which is now the spare because it's the leaky one. I just took the one that was off the shelf, my other Mallory 250, and put it on my car. And I never, it's got the gasoline, I assume, the gasoline, um, you know, a diaphragm and all that in there, it's never leaked. And that was, like I say, nine years ago, probably. So go figure. Uh, just some information. I, I think that I have, a, I have a good amount of information that I can share with people that are running ethanol, especially for the first time and you've heard horror stories and all that. There's no need to worry about it. Um, you just have to do things a little differently, nothing major. Um, and it's, in this case, I don't drain carburetors. I run my engine every once a month. Um, in Michigan, so in the winter time, you can't drive these things, but don't just let them sit either. And I think that that's uh, that's bode well for me. 
Okay, I know it has. It's 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 been great. When I've pulled carburetors apart after they've been on the uh, engine for like years, I'm talking about like two or three years, right? No chalking, no uh, black tar, because I've heard of people talking about black tar inside their uh, carburetors. And maybe that's a situation that's inherent with the southern climate where you have uh, lots of humidity and hot weather. Um, and maybe you've let the carburetor uh, empty out. I don't know what you did there because there were some people that I actually saw online and they were showing pictures and everything else. I've never seen anything like that. So I think if you, if you just keep your system primed and running and clean, you won't have an issue, okay? So now without further ado, let's fire this up. It should fire right up, it does usually. Get this out of the way. Gonna be a little bit noisy for you guys, but it's the sound of thunder. <laughs> I'm just going to shut it off a little early. I'll, I'll go ahead and run it without uh, sparing you guys the uh, uh, the boredom of it. Uh, I want to also say this too, uh, real quick. I leave my idle up because I run this. This is a pretty big motor. It's a 568, and I run a solid lift cam in it, a solid lift uh, roller cam. And when you run a roller cam, and in this case it has 22 thousandths of lash. You don't want your idle to be low. Um, a lot of people make this mistake as well, especially when they drive on the street. Um, if you're if you're running around a car with a big cam in it, and this doesn't really have a huge cam, it's only a 744 lift, uh, 280, 291 at 50. Um, but you don't want the rollers to be hammering the camshaft because of the lash, the 22 thousandths, as it's chopping around on the street. Or if it's just idling, those are the that's the worst thing you can do to a cam. You want the cam to be uh, with more RPM. So I like to run 1400 is minimum. 1500 is nice. Uh, when you're drag racing all the time, you know you're always running. You know the motor's pretty much spinning up a lot. You do have some idle time, but not much. Um, so that's another uh, key factor into helping a motor live. Uh, especially like I say with a solid lift roller you got to do it um, don't let your idle get down to 900 800 whatever that's just not gonna not gonna be uh, conducive to long lasting life with a solid roller cam so that's all I'm gonna talk about today uh, if you guys have any questions comments go ahead and leave them in the comments section below we go ahead and fire this up and let it run for a little longer probably about I'd say probably about eight minutes or so that's all I really need it's been running now what a few minutes but I'll probably run it for another five, six minutes and we should be good until another 30 days. Take care everyone. Till next time, like I always say, keep working on them because they're never done.